Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because I want to introduce to you Linda Lee. After struggling with anxiety and sleep, and, and she had sleep deprivation for quite some time since childhood, actually, Linda Lee, founder of the Mineral and Com Company, wanted to find a natural remedy for her symptoms. So she started an extensive search. At the end, she discovered that the mainstream cures only worsen things. So now she's on a mission to holistically help people overcome their anxiety and sleep deficiency, something that we all, a large number of people in the United States suffer with. So Linda, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? And, you know, I want to hear it all because this is very interesting. Well, thank you, Stacey. It's really nice to be here and to meet you. And I'm so excited to talk to your listeners about the, the links between sleep and anxiety and what we can really do to overcome those and live a better life, have more energy throughout the day. Um, so as you said, I've, I've had generalized anxiety since I was a, a child and it wasn't something that I talked about. It, it did go into panic attacks, which were very, very scary and um, just didn't know how to communicate or talk to anybody about it. So which actually added to that fear, that sense of that, you know, that, hey, I just really don't feel safe. Yeah. So I live with um, kind of a sense of low level worry um, it would kind of spike sometimes, but it was, it was kind of like something almost like a bad friend you just always had with you. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the anxiety and the insomnia kind of go together for a lot of us. So if you have anxiety, it's really hard to get to sleep or to stay into a deep sleep. Yes. And that deeper sleep, we really need that to, for restoration for our minds and our bodies. Um, so as I got into adulthood, I started to get some help, went to see some physicians, um, and we need traditional medicine, but a lot of it is not very advanced in terms of looking at our, our holistic self. Right. Um, I found about 15 years ago, an integrative doctor here in Wisconsin, Dr. Rose Kumar, who's absolutely amazing. She helped me. She saw me, yeah. she listened, you know, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Um, and she, uh, she helped me really, really turn the page. Um, but before that I did start, I was on four different, what I call big pharma, um, prescriptions, very strong prescriptions, one after the other, they didn't work. Right. I remember one day taking a walk and I just had decided to go off of one of them. So it's kind of in the, you know, in the experimental stage. And I remember going off of it. And one of the side effects were these brain, I call them brain zings. There's probably a different word for them. Yeah. Like zaps in your brain. Yes. I know what you mean. Right. And I thought this is horrible. This is terrible. And I feel like a zombie. I need to just completely look for something different. There's and medications can be helpful. Like you've talked about medications for ups, epilepsy, Yeah, um, you know, but in this, for me and my own personal journey, it was not, they actually made things much worse. I couldn't really have emotions the way I normally wanted to Yeah, to cry. It was, um, it was just a, it was just not me. You know, right. so that kind of started the whole journey of, Hey, there's gotta be something else out there. <laughs> right. You know, I, I feel sometimes like I, I would like to see people, you know, maybe try some natural remedies or holistic remedies before they go into those medications. Because even for myself, like my daughter, when I had her, I went through postpartum depression and they gave me medications to try to help me during that time that was good for anxiety and depression. But those medications numbed me. I had no emotion. I just, you know, I, if someone could just, you know, I get hit by a car in front of me and I'd be, oh, that's so sad. There was just, I had no emotions. My whole body became numb and it was a terrible feeling. And those medications, like you said, you cannot just go off of them because you will get some severe side effects. Like you did the zapping in the brain. You have to get weaned off of it slowly because your body becomes addicted to a lot of these medications. They become, you become dependent on it. And it's very hard to just get off of them. They have to be weaned slowly off by your doctor. And it's a terrible feeling because you go through the withdrawal process. And, um, you know, I know that you have mentioned that, you know, there are other ways, you know, that you can deal with your anxiety and you can deal with sleep deprivation. And, you know, what are some of the things that you found to be effective? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And so what I did learn and kind of going through this is 
Um, 50 to 70 million Americans struggle with sleep disorders. That comes from the American Sleep Association. The CDC says over one third of us are sleep deprived. COVID didn't help. It actually made things much worse, mm -hmm. including our children. Yes. Um, right. And I started putting it together in terms of, okay, um, magnesium might be a part of this. The WHO also says they estimate 70% of Americans are magnesium deficient and magnesium yes. I mean, you talked about that on your, on your previous podcast. I heard one with um, Dr. Pablo, uh, yeah. Billy. he brought it up and anybody and your listeners are probably in this kind of wellness podcast world. It's brought up all the time now. So it is because most people are magnesium deficient and they don't even realize it. Right. We're not getting it through our foods. There our soils are so depleted. So we're not getting yes. it there. Um, stress is a number one reason that our bodies re, uh, release magnesium. So look at all the stress that we have, right? It's like unprecedented processed foods are another thing I really like to talk about. If people oh, can look at two things, it's stress and processed foods. So the higher refined foods, the highly processed foods that are in the middle of the store, yeah, um, they actually can contribute to magnesium deficiencies and they certainly do not help anxiety. Now, can you explain to people why those processed foods are so bad and they can cause deficiency in magnesium? Because they, um, well, big food actually makes these foods to, um, to not create satiety, but also to make us more hungry. They're putting sugars in there. Sugars are actually really horrible for anxiety and for insomnia. Yes. There's nothing good about sugars. No, um, right. It destroys and the body. It, they destroy the body and yet it's cheap and big food. There's a book. Um, it's called, if, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called salt, sugar, fat. Um, the name of the author is Michael Moss read it a couple months ago. And he explains, um, what they, what the, like the Kellogg and other companies like that, how they create this very sugary, um, cereals yes. for kids. Kids are starting to get obese and even having pre-diabetic, um, you know, issues, that kind yeah. of thing. It's so much sugar. Um, so we've got to really look at that and to see the inflammation that these refined foods, what is really happening to us. Yeah. Um, you know, dairy as well. I, I stopped dairy because I started having some knee problems. I'm a big hiker. I love to go in the mountains and um, I couldn't even walk down a, a, a flight of stairs. And my integrative doctor said, think about dairy and what that, that does to your body. Yeah. These are not meant to have other species, you know, milk foods, that kind of thing. So it's yes. all this inflammation in your joints. It does. I, right. I stopped yeah. dairy within a couple of weeks, no problem at all. There was no pain whatsoever. So our bodies give us all these clues. What we have to do is just listen to what they're telling us. Yes. I tell people that all the time, our bodies give us signals all the time and we have to listen to them. When you have pain, your body's saying there's something wrong here. You know, either it's inflammation or there's a problem occurring. That's why we get these signals. That's why we get inflammation. That's why we get pain. And you know, this is why all these different things happen to us is because our body has given us signals. There's a problem over there and it needs to be resolved. Involved. And, you know, people have to realize that it's not running to the doctor and getting a pill. It's changing what we're doing, getting to the root cause of the problem. Absolutely. And our bodies can heal themselves if we understand what they're saying. Sometimes it starts out as a whisper and it gets louder and that's a shout. And pretty soon it's a scream and we're in the hospital Right so to the point where, okay, I want, I need to listen to the whispers before it gets into, you know, exactly shouting and I'm, and I'm sitting there in a hospital bed thinking, oh boy, you know, what's going on here. Um, a couple of the other, um, I call them magnesium depleters. One of them is caffeine. So we have to be careful with that. Yes. I think it's okay to drink some coffee and coffee does have some benefits. Um, alcohol is another big thing and it will disrupt sleep. So yes, it will. Um, <laughs> that wasn't something I wanted to learn. And a lot of your listeners might not like to hear that, but, um, I can tell you that once I understood about sleep and what our body, our livers need to process the alcohol first, because it sees the alcohol as a toxin. Yes, it does. Right. Mm -hmm. It takes it first before cancerous cells or whatever it's doing to clean us out yeah. in the middle of the night when we're sleeping. So I learned at two or three in the morning, if I'm waking up or I'm kind of in a sweat, it was because I had that glass of wine. And once I stopped it after a couple of weeks, boy, did that make a change. 
And people really? wonder why sometimes they're exhausted the next day. It's because your body was working so hard to get those, you know, to process the alcohol, to get it out of your system to, and then everything else is working hard and your body becomes very sluggish and it's trying mm. to get all these toxins out and it's overworking itself. And just like we were talking about sleep deprivation, while well, your body's going through a deprivation in itself, it's overworking itself. So the next day you wake up and you're exhausted and you probably, sometimes people go out and they drink on a Saturday night, Sunday, they're just sluggishly walking around the house like a zombie because their body you know was trying to flush out all those toxins and it was just overworking them and as you see it as you get older it's harder and harder and harder because our bodies don't work like it did when we were younger they're very different the we don't metabolize alcohol in our 50s let's say than we do in our 20s or even 30s exactly right and it's progressive it adds up and I can tell you at certain moments um, where, you know, I really felt like I knew I needed to change. I literally apologized to my body. You know, I call her a goddess. Mm -hmm. She's so wise. Yeah. But I did apologize and say, I'm sorry that I did that. Um, and, you know, I, and I felt very vulnerable and I felt like she responded and she, she healed me and she forgave me. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, so many people say, I can't get to sleep at night. My mind is always going and, you know, and they suffer from sleep deprivation because they cannot get themselves to that relaxed point where they could just shut off their brain and just go to sleep. Now, do you believe, well, I, I think it has to do a lot with what we put in our bodies. Do you believe that also? Absolutely. I mean, they, the, most of us know, don't eat a heavy meal, you know, two hours before we go to sleep or do really hard exercise. Cause those kind of things are going to rub our bodies up. But the other thing that's very, very easy is no screens about an hour before we go to bed. Yeah. Because that's a biggie. Light, right. And you get um, too overstimulated. Mm -hmm. I notice if I'm on Netflix or something like that, I just can't get to sleep. I just right. can't sleep. Right. Um, it's also really important to, of course, go to sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time, even on weekends. Yeah. And that's a little harder. And I think you have a little bit of leeway, maybe a half an hour and even, even an hour that you can kind of play with. Right. But it is really important to go along with our body's circadian rhythm. And we're going along with the light, just like animals do as well. So when it starts to get dark, we can start going into a routine of winding down. Right. And when we were talking about magnesium, I found that when you mix magnesium with pot potassium at nighttime, it calms you and it relaxes you. So people that I think that suffer from relaxing and trying to get to that point where they could actually fall asleep, I think magnesium and potassium is a good, good mixture. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you'll see the two of them, even another one um, in electrolytes. Mm -hmm. So if people are doing, let's say fasting and they need the electrolytes, you know, to do a, you know, a. 20 hour fast or something like that. It can work really well to, um, to keep them feeling good, um, and not having, you know, any low swings or stopping the fast or whatever. I believe in fasting, not real long-term fasting. Right. It's a great, great way for your body to reset. Yeah. I believe in detoxification. I, your body needs to detoxify, you know, it, you, you should always, you know, on a routine basis, you know, detox your body because you don't even realize how many toxins each day that you bring into your body just the in our environment the air the the water because no water it doesn't matter how many filters you have you're still going to get you know ingredients in the water that's not supposed to be in your body you know and filterization can work really well but it's not perfect. Just like when you buy people buy Poland spring and they did tests on different waters, they found a lot of different impurities in those waters still after going through, you know, all the things that they do to make these waters and, um, you know, uh, you know, detoxification can really help cleanse all the organs in the body. So they work better now to, to, you know, how do you like to detoxify your body? Um, so I do fasting. I do it really, maybe not every day, but almost every day. Um, I really like to eat one meal a day and that's my body is absolutely fine. I've never been a breakfast person, even though the breakfast cereal and that big food wants us to eat breakfast and it's right. the most important, you know, meal a day. I've never liked it anyway. Um, so for me, it was pretty easy just to kind of push out what we call a window. You kind of just push it out a little bit. Um, but I feel like I have much more energy it's a great way to lose, you know, some weight. 
Um, really, really good for anybody who's in pre-diabetes. Right. Um, I learned from Dr. Jason Fung. He's a nephrologist in Canada who is very open about big pharma, about keeping people addicted to medications, mm -hmm. about, you know, how people that they, the, traditional medicine doesn't talk about fasting and some very common sense things that people can do because there's no money in it. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. So, I know people who have gotten off of their medications. They were pre pre diabetic or diabetic and are now living normal, healthy lives. I knew people that were diabetic and they changed their eating routine and they started exercising a little bit, you know, cause they were a little bit older. So there's nothing crazy. They just started exercising a little and they got themselves to a normal sugar level and they were able to get off the medication just by dieting and incorporating just a little bit of exercise. Now for people who, you know, we were talking about a lot of different things right now, but all these things relate back to sleep deprivation, and it, and it relates back to anxiety because when you're taking care of your body and you're doing all these things, you'll notice that you'll be more focused. You'll be more relaxed. You'll, you'll see a whole change in, in your whole body mentally and physically, and you're sleeping and your um, and, and, you know, your anxiety level will improve as well. Now you call magnesium, the magical mi mineral. And why do you call it the magical mineral? Oh, it's so amazing. It does so many good things. I mean, it's, it helps with sleep issues, right? Like, first of all, it's, it's one of the essential uh, minerals. I just get so excited. It's required for energy production, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it, it, I say over 300, it oversees over 300 biochemical reactions in our bodies, but I've actually heard now of 600. So oh, really it's a lot, no matter what you say, it's a lot helps with stress, anxiety, depression, muscle soreness right? If we get yes. muscle soreness or cramps or little twitches, it's because, usually because of a magnesium deficiency. Um, it can help with um, maintain normal uh, nerve and muscle function, helps our, our hearts beat nice and steady. Um, it helps regulate our blood glucose levels. You talked about, you know, about diabetics and that kind of thing. Aids in the production of protein. It even can help things like I used to get eczema, right? And so I didn't like to wear, um, short sleeves and it was right. all the way up my wrist. And I tried every really harsh medication, but when I started making my own products, which was about 20 years ago, everything went away because what we put on our skin goes right into our bloodstream. Yes, it does. So that's kind of like a little tangent, but, um, but we do want to be really careful with what we put on our skin. For yes. Sure. Um, I just love magnesium though, because it, it's, it's kind of a, a wonder thing. And it can be at the very first part of that jigsaw puzzle when we're trying to improve our health, because when we sleep well, we're going to have more energy to go exercise. We're going to eat better food and not go to fast foods, right? Yes. We're going to just feel better. We're going to have better relationships. I mean, sleep is just critical for us to have good, happy lives. Right. And you know, when you were talking about eat good, healthy meals, when you get tired after you eat a meal, it's because your body's working overtime to try to break down that meal. Right. You Absolutely. Know? And it's really, um, there's a documentary called Game Changers. And I just love it. And it talks about what I was shocked about was um, they were doing these tests on these guys after they ate these burritos or something and different kinds of meats and the non-meat the body responded within 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, that's how quickly our bodies will process yeah. and respond to the food that we put in. So you think about caffeine, you think about sugar. I mean, think about, you know, I feel really tired after I eat sugar. And oh, I know yeah, I do too. Yeah. It it's gives you that quick fix for a few. And then all of a sudden you feel the crash. Yeah, it's a crash and it's really uncomfortable. And I feel like I want to go take a nap. Yes, right? mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely. You know, and people don't realize also when you're talking about the creams that you made and everything, there are a lot of things on the market that are not organic and there have a lot of things that aren't good for you in the body. And, you know, they have taken things off the market even because some of those ingredients could be cancer causing, you know, and even some of the dyes they put in to make these pretty colors, you couldn't cause cancer. And, you know, you're putting it on your skin, not realizing that it's going straight into your bloodstream and all those, you know, impurities and all those things that are artificial are going in your body and your body doesn't know what to do with them. So it's storing it. And then you have a buildup of toxins in your body. And then all these conditions and illnesses can come about from nowhere. 
So Mm -hmm. now you have organic products, correct? It's all organic. Um, Part of why I wanted to start a company with these products is, um, is to be the antithesis of what you're talking about, to not put phenoxyethanol in there, for example, as a very cheap preservative. I started looking through all of my products years and years ago, really good brands. Yeah. And you can go on ewg.org and you go into skin deep and you can look up anything that you want on a label for something, you know, your listeners have in their bathrooms. And I started doing that years and years ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm spending a lot of money for this horrible, you know, preservative. Yeah. Our products should not last five years. No. I mean, think about them as like your, your, your organic greens that you get. Okay. Exactly. You want them to last for five years. And of course, you know, my uh, body butter doesn't last the same as spinach, Right. Uh, but, but we have to think about what are we putting on there? Are these fillers? Am I paying for water? Um, it's really important to put organic products whenever we can. And I always yes. say it's not perfect. Food is not always going to be organic and our, our skincare is, but really look at the companies and look at, you know, like we have fair trade, we uh, are leaping bunny. So it's um, uh, cruelty free. We only work with companies who have very, very strong values. Um, our main supplier is Oregon Till. So they are actually zero waste. I mean, they're amazing and I trust them. And I've been a customer for, you know, for over 20 years with them. So it was right. only natural to them, you know, work with them as a partner. Um, but we really want to look at what are we putting on our skin? The yeah. word fragrance is one I just want to point out too. It can mean over 3000 different things. All they have to write is fragrance. We right. Really know what that is. That's amazing. I didn't really know, know that it was over 3000. Yep. Over 3000 things. There's very little to none um, in terms of oversight for what labeling is, what marketing is. We really have to get to know our companies. Yes. And, you know, we were discussing this before a lot of people, you know, because of the way things are marketed, people think that, you know, they get this perception, the more expensive it is, the better the product. And that's not true. You know, it's a lot of times you're paying for the label, you're paying for that pretty bottle, you're paying for the box, you know, that the bottle goes in and, you know, you're paying for all that marketing. And that's why it's so expensive. There have been companies that have been on the market for years and they're so expensive, but they're not really that great. You know, people might rant and rave, oh, they make my skin feel soft or they do this and that. But if you really look at what they're made of, they're not really made of much and they're not really that great for your body either. They're not that great. And I'm glad you pointed it out. And that was part of why I wanted to do this company too, was I looked at the, I have a whole file and, you know, very overpriced, um, ridiculous statements and claims of companies where, you know, you'll get maybe half an ounce of serum for, you know, $250. Yeah. And there are people who buy that, but you Oh, are- there's lots of people. Lots of people, and we have to get as consumers. We have to start looking at labels. Yeah, and I actually um, have a a blog on how to read a label. I mean, yeah, we can do it with food. I know it's hard when you're looking at a whole big long list on on the back of your lotion bottle or something, but we can start to look at different things and start to understand. First, it's kind of like food. If there's a whole long list there, question that. Yes. Right. If you see something like fragrance, question that. Right. If you see a claim on there, question that. And we have to start thinking about it. And I had used very, what I thought were very good brands. They weren't the real, real expensive ones. Yeah. Looking at their labels. And I thought, boy, this is not a good product. I don't want this body. Right. Yeah. And that's when I, I, when I really got into holistic living, I started looking at labels and the best way I could explain to people is if you look at the label and you skim down the label, if you can't pronounce it, it's not good for you. Right. <laughs> it's very true. And my thing too, is I, I um, joke about this, but there is some truth to it is if you really wanted to, could you eat that product? Right. right. It's kind of like your home um, cleaners. Could yeah. you eat it? Now mine, you could, because I use, you know, I use vinegar and I use some essential oils and they're very basic, right? Yeah. And hazel or whatever. And not that I'm saying anybody should eat my product, but <laughs> and you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't die. <laughs> right. Right. I you get really you. would be okay. There's nothing in there that will kill you or make you sick. Right. Now, what type of products do you offer? 
Um, so we have, um, we have, it's pure magnesium. We have two products right now and I'm working on a children's product. One is, one of our products is organic lavender and it's lavender citrus blend, really nice. And then we also make an unscented because a lot of our customers like just no scent. Yes. Um, so those are the two. What I'm really proud of is magnesium is the number one ingredient on the label. Nobody that I can find anywhere in the U.S. and beyond can state that, that it's the first ingredient. We are very, very concentrated. You only need one teaspoon a day. So it's so easy to help replenish that deficiency. You know, I tried every product out there and a lot of the sprays and the, they're very sticky or you have to rinse them off about yes. 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. So I would do that. My skin got really dry. Honestly, I don't want to rinse it off. I, right. I just want to put a product on, go to sleep and be done. I don't want to have to go take a shower. Yes. Um, it, right. And so ours, it's over 200 milligrams per teaspoon. It's absorbable magnesium though. And it's really important to know. It, it's also called elemental. If anybody's heard of that, it's really important to talk to companies about what is actually absorbable because there's in our product, it's actually over 400, but only half of that actually can go into your bloodstream. So we don't count half of it, right? Okay. But you'll see a lot of companies out there, they count everything. Yes. Right. And you can't, like, you have to understand the, what this mineral is and what it, what, how it actually can go into your bloodstream. Right. What, you know, and what's going to work. So I do contact, uh, when I was just experimenting with a lot of different products, I did contact them. And I'll tell you, a lot of people did not know anything about absorbable or elemental or what that even meant or what is, what actually goes into your body. Right. So, Again, we have to talk to our companies that we are doing business with. Yeah. And I, I don't think people realize what they need to look for when they buy these products. They just see that, oh, it's a firming cream. Oh, it, you know, it's going to help me with, you know, common. It's going to make my skin glow, you know, and, and they don't realize, you know, um, what these products can actually do for them. And they don't realize what they need to look for. So if you were to tell your, the audience, what some things besides the labels, you would tell them that the absorbable, how much absorbs into the skin. Correct. Yep. And it, it might be called elemental, it might be called absorbable, but they should know how much, and it is only half of the base raw materials. Right. Okay. Um, and also just look at like, are there any fillers? Yes. You know, are there any fillers? I mean, um, you know, there has to be a little bit of water in there, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so because it has to dissolve with the magnesium, but look at, look at the number one, two, maybe three um, things that are on the label. Cause that's, that's, what's going to be in the product. Yeah. The vast majority is the first, you know, probably the first three. So what are you really paying for? Um, it's important that every single ingredient in our products has a purpose, right? It has a purpose. We're not paying for filler. Um, and really look beyond marketing claims because a lot yes. of marketing, again, there's no oversight on it. They can say whatever they want. Of course. And just like food, you know, they'll, they'll be like, you know, no added preservatives. Well, no added preservatives. I mean, they are preservatives in there. They just didn't add any extra more, you know, than, you know, than what's already in there. So when you hear no added preservatives, you immediately think, oh, there's nothing bad. There's no preservatives in there, but that's not necessarily true. So. You're so, you're so spot on. That's exactly what we need to do. And a lot of us will just look at me included. I'll just look at the front of a label and look at the claims and think, oh, well, it has something healthy in there. Right. Yeah. But really. I always say flip it. You have to flip it around. You know, you'll yeah. see when I'm shopping, I'm standing there for a while. Cause I look through the labels and I'm also extremely allergic to nuts. So that's, so as a kid, I've always been trained to do that. So I think for me, it's very easy um, flip it over, see what's in there. Right. Don't just look at the front and the claims. You've got to flip it over. Do you really want to put that in your body? A lot of times I'll say, nope, I'll put it right back. <laughs> right. I, I agree with you hundred percent. Now, you know, everybody suffers from anxiety in one point of their life or, you know, or they, cause the life is just so complicated and there's so many things going on in everybody's life. Everybody runs into obstacles. Everyone has responsibilities and every, some people handle stress a little better than others. But at some point we all express, you know, we all, I can identify with anxiety and sleep, you know, getting a good night's sleep. Everybody struggle, struggles at some point, you know, and some people struggle really bad. 
So what are some tips you like to give the audience? You know, if there's just, if they're dealing with anxiety or if they're dealing with, you know, trouble sleeping, what are some things they could do at home to maybe, you know, help them, you know, change their life so they can get a better sleep and suffer from less anxiety? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And there's so many things that we can do. And with the internet and with, with, there's a lot of good companies who are making products that we can trust, Mm -hmm. but some things that we can do is to get more sleep is, you know, start thinking about our wind down process, maybe an hour or two before we actually go to, you know, go to bed. I think it's really important to make our bedroom very beautiful Mm -hmm. for as much as we can to have a really, a really comfortable mattress to have beautiful sheets on there. Almost like what you would see in a high-end department store, you know, those beds and you think I could take a nap in one of those beds, right? Like right right now it's just pure luxury and, you know, beautiful soft pillows and um, having a good book or something to look forward to. I love candles. I love candles. They're very soothing. Um, and to get us ready and to think about, Hey, I'm not going to stimulate my brain right now. I'm going to just breathe, um, a few yoga, you know, a lot of people think yoga is a little too much. You can do just a couple of stretches, Yes, right. To loosen things up and to kind of get into the, we can train our brains. I think of my brain as a puppy. I get to train it Mm -hmm. and it responds. It's amazing. We actually can train our brain to get ready for bed and to to get into that deep sleep because if we don't do that our next day is kind of shot yeah you know and so all those things um not drinking alcohol is really really important Mm -hmm. Um, not drinking anything caffeine about six hours before we go to bed not having a big heavy meal i think exercise during the day even if it's in little stints even if it's 10 minutes at a time but those 10 minutes add up right maybe you have time to go for a 10 minute walk around the block and do that a few times, right? right? We need to move our bodies because they're meant to move. They're not meant to sit in front of a computer all day. Yes. Not at all. hundred percent. Um, and just get off the screens. It's really, really important. You know, we all do our binges on Netflix and it's kind of fun, but I think it's really important on a, on a, on a regular basis to stop the screens, put the phone away and have these really beautiful, um, rituals. Yes. Our brains will love that. And there's even some really nice music to kind of, you know, get us in a kind of in that sleep state. Yeah. And it takes a while and it's, but it's worth the effort. It is worth the effort. It definitely is. Yeah. Now for people, you know, know, there's a lot of people that don't know a lot about vitamins and minerals and supplements, but yet they, they, they want, they, they, they want to be healthy, but they, they're not, you know, they're not too sure how to go about it. Now, when it comes to magnesium deficiency, cause we've been discussing how important it is to have a good supply of magnesium in your body. What are some of the things they could look for? Maybe symptoms that they might real see when they're starting to become magnesium deficient. Yeah, it's another great question. So we know insomnia and we know anxiety, okay? Um, if we don't handle stress very well, okay, that goes along with it. If we're, we feel like we're tired, we're just chronically tired. If we have muscle t- uh, tension, like spasms, cramping, especially overnight, that can be a, a good indication. Um, headaches and even migraines. Poor cognitive processes, like we're just not feeling, um, we're feeling foggy, you know, that cottony kind of, you yeah. know, we don't have clarity in our thoughts. Right. Oh, another thing is we're not remembering things. We're not remembering. So our short-term memory is, is, is not what it used to be kind of feeling irritable, you know, with other people. Yeah. Those are just kind of a, a short list. I mean, there's other things, but that's a short list of some of the signs that we see with deficiencies. Yes. And how do you feel about people going for blood work to make sure that their levels are, you know, adequate and on level? Yeah. It's a good, it's a good question. I just um, did a podcast with Annika Carroll of sleep like a boss. She's amazing. She's in Canada. And we were talking about this before we started and uh, only 1%, about 1% of magnesium is in the blood. So if, you know, if you want to, if your doctor wants to do a magnesium blood test, it's probably not going to, um, there's a, there's a different one, I guess, to do. It's an RBC blood test. It's a special yeah. But just the regular panel, it comes in a panel and I've had it done, um, doesn't really show much at all because most, most of our magnesium is in our bones and in our, our soft muscle tissue. Right. So we're not, we're not going to really see that we're, we need to go more by our symptoms. Yes. And I also, you know, I go to a functional medicine doctor and like 
I get my blood work done every six months and they look for things that they don't necessarily a primary doctor will look for. And, you know, so, you know, doctors like integrative medicine and functional medicine doctors, they tend to, when they do blood work, they look, they go a little bit deeper and they check a lot of things that a, a, a primary doctor wouldn't check for, which could also help you recognize if you are magnesium deficient as well. Absolutely. Um, I do hormonal panels about every five months or so. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for women, it's very, very important, especially when they start like perimenopause. Yes. Right. Because I do too. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And we may need some hormone balancing, that kind of thing, because our bodies are just not going to make um, maybe enough progesterone, or maybe there's going to be a ratio imbalance between estrogen and progesterone or, testosterone is important as well. Right. So for women, especially they do need to get with a doctor, um, who understands that and who, who knows how to remedy. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now, where can people find you? Where can they find their website and all your information? Cause you know, I think a lot of people are interested in how they could heal themselves holistically for sleep deprivation and anxiety, and not have to resort to medications that could really be harmful to the bodies. Yeah, right. Thank you. So our website is mineralandcompany.com. And they can go there for um, information. We've got blogs, we're adding to it all the time, like about the labels, they can go in there and look about how do I how do I read a label? What, why is this important? Right? Right. So we, you know, so it's not just about our products. It's about all of the products that we use. It's about all the foods. It's about understanding why is that middle of the store something to stay away from? What's it yeah. doing to me? Right. And so, um, so we, we just, we really believe that we vote with our wallets Yeah, uh, and we need to support not just our local companies, but companies who have very strong, a very strong ethical and value system. Yes. Uh, and they have very high quality products. Yes, definitely. 100%. And both your products are topical. Yes, they are topical. Um, they are meant to, it's right here. If anybody can oh, see yeah. it. show us, please is what it looks like so this is the lavender citrus blend it's very easy to use you can basically put it anywhere i um i it seems like a lot of a lot of our customers like to put it on their shoulders right before bedtime mm -hmm. i use it about 20 30 minutes beforehand because that's how long it takes to kind of you know sink in right um, and really work and it's it's just it's just amazing um or if you have any cramping let's say for athletes or people who like to go running they put it on their calves you okay know, they won't get cramping at night. It'll just relax everything. So this one smells really good. Uh, but there's some people, like I said, that just love unscented. Yeah. Um, you can put it anywhere. You can put it on your stomach. You can put it on your feet. It'll, those are good receptors pretty much anywhere. I just say, keep it away from your face. Okay. Right? Eyes, that kind of thing. But it's, it's not drying. It's not irritating at all. Everything in here is to support the absorption of that uh, magnesium. Now, if you keep it away from your eyes, can you put it on your cheeks and neck area or you don't? You put, yeah, you could put a little bit on your neck. I would just say, make sure that, you know, you don't rub your eyes or anything like that because right. it, it might sting a little. Yeah. You, people who are super deficient, it does get a little tingly for them. Oh, really? And, yeah. And so they're really deficient. I have absolutely no tingling whatsoever, but I know at the very beginning for some of my very early, early products. Um, there was a little bit of tingling in there. And so um, I knew that was from a deficiency. It does go away. I usually tell people to use a teaspoon a day for at least uh, two weeks. Until okay. your body, you know, your body isn't going to respond immediately. Some people do, but most people, it does take a couple of weeks for them to really get into that deeper sleep. Um, and the thing is, is once you start one thing, it's kind of a domino effect. Yeah. Right. You're in REM, you're in that deep sleep and you wake up thinking, wow, I feel really good. Yeah. I'm going to go out for a walk. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to think about, you know, doing yeah. something. Different. I'm going to, I'm going to, I feel a little more creative. I feel more like I'm at home with my body. Right. Right. And then people, you know, especially women or even men too, because I've heard them complaining, oh, I have puffy eyes. Well, maybe if you got a good night's sleep and you did the right things to get that good night's sleep, you wouldn't have the puffy eyes because a lot of times the puffy eyes are from that. Right. Absolutely. It's just amazing to see people um, make one change that actually affects another change and another change and another change. It's, it's um, we're all, everything's connected. So you fix one part 
yeah. and then it you know you'll start seeing changes and the more you start change, changing things before you know it you could have a new you you know and that's totally. it, you know and that's what we want especially at our ages as well you know even younger kids when it comes to anxiety the whole younger generation you know i feel sorry for that generation because they all have anxiety way too young and you know and they you know and when you're young you don't sleep well you know because there's so many stresses nowadays that we didn't have in our society and you know this is something that could they could use also not just you know the uh, you know the, the the baby boomers but them also Absolutely. I mean, our next product is going to be, well, people have asked, asked for a, a, a two ounce one for travel. So we're going to do that. This is 4.6. And then um, I've been working on a children's product. It's going to be about half strength. Oh, excellent. Because, yeah. I mean, they are not getting the sleep that they need. COVID did not help. School shootings really cause a lot of anxiety. Yes, it did. Right. And their screens, they're on screens a lot. And so their brains are not shutting down right? We're, we're overstimulating ourselves. Yeah. So, um, so it's a product for kids and I've, I've been beta testing it and so far it's going really well. Oh, that's awesome. Good yeah. luck with that. And then we'll, when do you think that will be out? Um, we're hoping within the next three months. Oh, excellent. Well, you're going to have to come on and tell us all about that. <laughs> I would love to, I would love to. Now, once again, I just want you to remind everybody your website. So they remember, just say your yeah. website again for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. So it's mineral and a n d company.com. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show. And I appreciate everything you do. And it's been a pleasure speaking with you and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey.